Hello everyone, I'm Akif and today we'll be discussing about Wireshark. Wireshark is a very handy tool. Uh, it is very useful when it comes to networking. Uh, it helps researchers to do some data analysis when it comes to the uh, networking traffic. Or it can also be used by hackers for, for security purposes. Now, uh, before moving into the real Wireshark environment, we need to discuss some things. Why is Wireshark important and why it's useful? And um, so th this is the OSI model and TCPI model. In OSI, we have physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation, and application layer. In TCP IP model, we have um, application layer instead of these three layers, which we have as session, presentation, and application in OSI model. Now, when we look at the data and whenever we are into this internet thing, we see things on our web pages or the applications that run on internet, we see them in a human readable form. There's this graphical user interface. Uh, but when it comes to the real moment of data, uh, there's a different story going. Uh, each layer has a name for the data that it carries. For example, in the application layer, we, we have these applications running like Chrome or other Internet Explorers. Uh, in presentation layer, which actually is essential for, you know, the way we present it, session involves the sessions for how long we want the communication to happen, then transport layer is something that is associated with flow control. Um, a network layer where we are, where our routers are and w where we see how these routing protocols guide or carry uh, the data that's going through. I request you to go through these uh, models and I won't be covering them in this lecture. Uh, maybe we will do it in some future lecture. We will discuss in detail about the various uses of each layer. Uh, but for now, I request you to go through uh, this OSI model and TCPI model and just look at these uh, summarized descriptions of the various uses and applications of these layers. Now, whenever we have this data uh, that belongs to different layers, they have a name. It can be a message. It can be can be just anything. For example, we have segments. We have different names that belong to different layers. Then we have datagrams. We have packets. We have frames. And we have bits. So as I said, initially, each and everything is in what we can see and what is readable, what is discernible. Uh, but uh, as they move downwards, the data, how, they t how the data travels uh, when it moves from one computer to another, this is this logical model and the data flows downwards like this. And as it flows downwards, it's converted into a form that's understood by that very particular layer. Eventually what happens in the end is that we see something in the form of zeros and ones. This is what happens in the physical layer. That's why it's called bits, zeros and ones, ones and zeros, ones and zeros, something like that. It's how the data flows, moves from one computer to another in the form of zeros and ones. And then again, um, as I said, the data flows downwards when it comes to OSI model, and it travels in the form of zeros and ones, zeros and ones, zeros and ones, then it moves upwards, and it's converted in the form that we understand. Now, when this data travels in the form of zeros and ones, we're not able to discern what it means. Uh, so we, we look for something that gives us a snapshot of uh, the data that's going through uh, the wire, optical fiber, or any other medium we have. And we want to discern what the meaning is. 
what is actually the meaning of this data and that's what Wireshark does we have data in the form of uh, zeros and ones which is something that's understood by machines and we have also data uh, which depends upon the rep representation we want to choose in the hexadecimal format and then we have something in the form of what is understood by us so let's have a look at that I have clicked on it let's see what happens it takes some time so we need to choose the interface this is the interface I choose I clicked on it so this is how the data is getting captured live so th this is what I was talking about Wireshark gives us two options something which is uh, understood by the router or uh, switch or depending upon the uh, de networking devices you can have a look at this it's zeros and ones zeros and ones we can convert it into hexadecimal wave which is like this then we have something which is understood uh, by us something that's human readable internet protocol version 4 header length so all these zeros and ones they have a meaning uh, which we might cover in some future videos. So that was all for today. Thanks and have a nice day.